Hello, everyone. Welcome to the China Brief. We bring you the latest global media coverage on China's current affairs, economy, and society, as well as exclusive analysis. Our trustworthy, professional, and multi-perspective China reporting provides judgment and decision-making references for the world's elites. The China Brief is issued in multiple languages, including text, video, podcasts, and books, and is broadcasted 24/7 in the six-degree world. Welcome to this edition of China Briefing. In China Briefing, we bring you the latest news on China's politics, economy, and society from the global media, as well as exclusive expert analysis. If you find our content helpful, please subscribe to our newsletter. How China is pulling in European leaders. The New York Times reports that Chinese Foreign Minister Qin Gang left Beijing yesterday to visit three countries with plans to reassure Europe that they can still do business with China. However, in Berlin, German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock confronted the Chinese minister about the war in Ukraine, saying, "Neutrality means siding with the aggressor, and that is why our guiding principle is to make it clear that we are on the side of the victims." Beijing can do more to help end the war. President Vladimir Putin does not want serious negotiations on peace, and China may be helping Putin stay in power, according to senior European and American officials. Qin sees Europe's key economic ties with China as a key asset, saying, "We welcome further European engagement in Chinese markets and development opportunities, so that China's modernization and European integration processes continue to flourish." Here is the China briefing. Japan working to open NATO liaison office in Tokyo, Ambassador. Nikkei Asia reports that Japan is working to open a NATO liaison office in Tokyo as the U.S.-led alliance seeks its first center in Asia, according to Japanese ambassador to the United States Koji Tomita. The U.S. has not confirmed the report, which suggests the office would facilitate consultations in the region. According to Nikkei Asia, the move is aimed at addressing geopolitical challenges from China and Russia. China. However, said the move justifies high vigilance in the face of NATO's eastern expansion. Here's the China briefing. Asian women are insecure about retirement, but worry investments aren't right for them. A study by Fidelity International shows that women in the Asia Pacific region are less confident than men about their retirement funds because of rising inflation, global economic uncertainty, and a lack of investment confidence. The South China Morning Post reports, the survey found that the cost of living is the top concern for 81% of women in the region, followed by 73% who are worried about the long-term health of the economy. Seven in ten women in Asia are anxious about their ability to save and invest, while less than 30% say they are confident they have enough savings to support them in retirement. Women tend to focus on things they can control. Such as reducing expenses, while men are more likely to invest to help meet retirement income needs. Less than a third of women invest in stocks and shares, with most preferring cash savings, time deposits, and foreign currency. Here's the China briefing. First FT: China vows to retaliate against EU sanctions. The Financial Times reports that China has threatened a strict and firm response to the European Union's proposed sanctions against eight of its companies. The EU accuses the entities of selling weapons-related equipment to support the Russian military, and the proposed sanctions are contingent on unanimous agreement by EU member states. Chinese Foreign Minister Qin Gang added that normal exchanges and cooperation between Chinese and Russian companies exist and should not be interfered with. This is a China briefing. Canada fears China may cause pain in escalating diplomatic expulsion row. The Toronto Star reports that China has ordered Jennifer Lalonde, Canada's Consul General in Shanghai, to leave the country by May 13. Intensifying the conflict between the two countries, Lalonde's expulsion is a direct retaliation for the expulsion of Toronto-based Chinese diplomat Zhao Wei, whom Canada accuses of targeting the family of a Conservative Party lawmaker. 
The Canadian government also warned that China could retaliate economically. In the past, China has blocked imports of Canadian goods and imposed stiffer fines on Canadians imprisoned in the country as a result of political sanctions or actions. Here's the China briefing. How Japan's leaders are finding their groove. Bloomberg reports that Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida has made a comeback under favorable conditions, weathering scandals and controversies and re-emerging with successful diplomacy. An expert in international relations, Kishida's strengths have been exploited by the Biden administration's strategy to contain the rise of China and promote allies, and the successful launch of the vaccine has brought an end to most of Japan's new crown-era measures. Kishida may now use his favorable conditions to call an early election, capitalizing on his current domestic and international support so that taxes and other undesirable conditions do not affect his popularity. Here is the China briefing. Low carbon, made in Vietnam, a new recipe for Chinese exporters seeking orders. The South China Morning Post reports that low carbon production plants in Southeast Asia have become a valuable tool for Chinese exporters to gain new customers in the West. Showcasing green products at the recently concluded Canton Fair, Organizers reported that more than 129,006 overseas buyers placed orders for $21.7 billion. We have signed orders worth $500,000 at the Canton Fair, all of which came from Europe and the U.S. because they are so focused on recycling and green growth, said Lu Ku, head of Vontone Stationery in Ningbo. Meanwhile, Ray Zhang, sales manager for Shanghai's newest luggage, said, as our European customers have told us, the future is decarbonization. China has invested heavily in renewable materials to fuel its green transformation and boost its economy after President Xi Jinping announced a dual carbon goal for 2020. The Canton Fair, also known as the China Import and Export Fair, was held offline for the first time in three years, and many multinational companies accelerated the deployment of their China Plus One and, in China, for China, strategies to diversify their investments into other regions, including Southeast Asia. Here is the China briefing. Germany's Burbeck says China can help end Ukraine war. Deutsche Welle reports that a German foreign minister says China can help end the war in Ukraine but refuses to acknowledge that its aid to Russia is prolonging the conflict. The German and Chinese foreign ministers spoke to reporters at a meeting in Beijing about China's status as a permanent member of the UN Security Council. Chinese Foreign Minister Qin Gang, who is visiting Europe, downplayed China's ties with Russia while also pushing back against potential sanctions. Western countries accuse China of providing political and material support to Russia since Moscow's annexation of Crimea and invasion of Ukraine. This is a China briefing. Global challenges weaken dollar as world reserve currency. The Globe and Mail reports that cultural and economic challenges in the U.S. have caused it to lose its dominant position as the world's reserve currency. China, RSA, India and Brazil have a combined GDP of about $24 trillion, roughly the same as the US and higher than the EU's $16.6 .6 trillion GDP. The dollar's position has weakened due to decades of fiscal irresponsibility and sluggish economic growth. Recent US moves, such as kicking Russia out of the international payment system and confiscating its assets, have led to growing concern among other countries that they may face the same treatment. The dollar will remain a reserve currency for some time, but the decline will be gradual. Investors are advised to move some bond exposure out of Canada and the US to diversify and use their money more wisely. Here is the China briefing. Sri Lanka's creditors hold first meeting with China as observer. Nikkei Asia reports that Sri Lanka's creditors, including Japan, France and India, held their first meeting to discuss restructuring the country's debt. The largest creditor, China, sat in on the virtual meeting, raising doubts about the success of the process. Participants agreed to reduce Sri Lanka's debt, 
but it is unclear whether China's participation is necessary for a successful resolution. Here is the China briefing. How good can China be at generating artificial intelligence? While China is ahead of the U.S. in some aspects of AI research, the U.S. is still ahead in building the foundational models that give intelligence to generate AI, according to The Economist. U.S. innovation in producing a highly digital and English-language Internet has helped create more data for U.S. machine learning, as 56% of all websites are in English. Lack of data is also one reason why the Chinese Wudo 2.0 AI model, which was launched by the Beijing Institute of Artificial Intelligence in 2021, did not make its debut because it had relatively little data to train on. Another obstacle is the U.S. technological advantage in terms of hardware and technology exports. Open source models could help alleviate the lack of data and hardware shortage for Chinese AI research, however, there is also a knowledge shortage due to the lack of Chinese students studying in the U.S. and the current geopolitical tensions. Open source models could help China solve some of these problems and potentially train a more affordable and efficient system that could compete with USAI. Ultimately, however, the ability of the United States to innovate and proliferate is critical to maintaining the U.S. leadership as an AI superpower. Here's the China briefing. Boeing CEO believes 737 deliveries in China will resume soon. Boeing chief executive Dave Calhoun said the company will restart exports of 737 MAX jets to China, where air travel has surged since the end of the embargo, Bloomberg reported. The company reportedly delayed the sale of the jets to Chinese airlines, and the country avoided importing the model after it was involved in two fatal crashes. Calhoun claimed the market is coming back despite China lagging behind other countries, which bodes well for the company. Ryanair, meanwhile, recently ordered 300 jets from Boeing, although the company has struggled to keep up with demand in recent years. Here's the China briefing. How to think about green industrial policy. The New York Times reports that the Inflation Reduction Act, which the Biden administration signed into law in August 2021, aims to address climate change through industrial policy. Despite the controversy over green subsidies, businesses are already benefiting from the bill, which is expected to cost hundreds of billions of dollars more than expected. While other countries have questioned the protectionist nature of the legislation, Europeans are considering the Green New Deal industrial program, but the bill appears set to succeed in the government's fight against climate change. The Inflation Reduction Act differs from previously proposed industrial policies in that it aims to limit rather than increase economic growth and reshape the economy. Here is the China briefing. China's raids on foreign companies hurt itself. The Financial Times reports that raids by Chinese security forces on several U.S. consulting firms in China will strike at the heart of the West's relationship with the world's second-largest economy and could lead to a fundamental breakdown between China and Western multinationals. Consulting firms provide market research and due diligence work for a range of Western companies that have invested billions of dollars in China, forming a major backer of the West's continued engagement with China. Multiple raids on U.S. companies Capvision, Bain and Company in Mints have marked a sea change in Beijing's attitude toward U.S. companies, with allegations of espionage raising concerns and leading to a warning from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce last month. Six Degrees Briefing has an instant collation and translation system for hundreds of authoritative media outlets around the world.